here's solutions to quiz six. Um, the first question, we're just asked to evaluate a bunch of limits. This is a L'Hopital's rule question. Um, to make sure you can use L'Hopital's rule, uh, the way I like to think about it is plug in one for all of the x's and make sure you get an indeterminate form, either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So let's see, if we plug in one, we get five minus two minus three divided by one times zero, so zero over zero. So maybe I'll even write zero over zero over here. So because that's true, we can use L'Hopital's rule and say that this limit right here is equal to the limit as x approaches one of the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. See up top, the derivative of five to the x is five to the x times the natural log of five and the derivative of two to the x is two to the x natural log of two. And the derivative of constant is just zero. See on the bottom here, you could use the product rule or you can think of the bottom as equal to x squared minus x if you distribute this x in. Then it's a little bit easier to see what the derivative is. We got two x minus one. Um, and what's nice about this limit right here is it's something we can evaluate. The way we do that is we plug in a 1 for all the x's. So what we get is 5 natural log of 5 minus 2 natural log of 2, all divided by 1. You can use some log rules if you really want to simplify that, but I think that is just fine. Moving on, the second one here. Um, what I want you to see here, well, I guess first is... A huge number raised up to the 20th power is a huge number. And e raised up to a huge power is, again, a huge number. So this is of the infinity over infinity form. So what that means is that we can use L'Hopital's rule. Um, so just to keep track. Uh, if you lose, use L'Hopital's rule, you'll get something that is, again, of this form. And actually, you could do that 20 times to still get something of this form. So what I kind of wanted you to see is that no matter how many times you take the derivative, the bottom will still be e to the x. However, if you take the derivative of the top a bunch of times, each time you take the derivative, this power will go down. Um, and eventually, you'll just have a constant up top be some big number. Actually, it'll be 20 times 19 times 18 and so on all the way down to 1. Um, but it really doesn't matter what the number is up top. The point is that this is just a constant. It's just some number divided by something that gets huge, right? e to the infinity. So what we end up here, when the top's a constant and the bottom gets arbitrarily large, uh, that limit approaches zero. So the limit of this is just zero. And finally, the third one. I think this one gave people the most trouble. Um, let's start just by plugging in zero. Let's see, we'll get zero minus zero over zero. So it is of a form that we can use L'Hopital's rule. Using L'Hopital's rule, this is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the top, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of x is just one. And the derivative of the bottom here, x to the fifth, goes down to five x to the fourth. Um, and now let's try plugging in zero. Cosine of zero is one. One minus one is zero. Bottom is also zero. So we are still of an indeterminate form. So we use L'Hopital's rule again. Let's see, derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative on the bottom here, you get 20x cubed. And let's try again, plug in 0. Um, sine of 0 is 0. 20 times 0 cubed is 0. So we're still of an indeterminate form here. So we take the derivative again. Using L'Hopital's rule, that limit is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 
of derivative of negative sine of x is negative cosine of x. Derivative of 20x cubed is 60x squared. Um, and this is a limit that it'll turn out is not an indeterminate form. It's not one of these 0 over 0 guys. Uh, let's see, if you plug in 0, negative, let's see, the cosine of 0 is 1. So this is sort of negative 1 over 0, I suppose, if you're looking for a form that it takes. Um, and this right here is not an indeterminate form. Our only two indeterminate forms are 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. Um, so we cannot use L'Hopital's rule again. We have to evaluate this limit. This limit exists if and only if the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of this thing is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side of this thing. So here we're thinking a number slightly greater than 0. The top will get really close to negative 1. A uh, slightly positive number squared will be really, really small but positive times 60 won't matter. So we'll get negative 1 over a really, really small positive number. So we'll get negative infinity. Um, and down here, as we approach 0 from the negative side, the top will be the same. We still got negative 1 here. Uh, let's see, the bottom, a really, really small negative number. So negative 0. 0.00001 squared becomes a really, really small positive number. Times 60, we're still positive. So again, we got a negative divided by a positive. So we got the negative infinity. So because these two guys are the same, this limit right here, so, so the limit as x approaches 0 of negative cosine of x over 60x squared equals negative infinity. Um, and by L'Hopital's rule, that means this limit up here is also equal to negative infinity. So the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x minus x over x to the fifth is equal to negative infinity. All right, moving on to problem two. All right, number two, optimization. We want to build a 100 square meter rectangular yard, and we want to minimize cost. So our constraint is that the yard should be 100 square meters. And the thing we want to minimize is cost. So let's see, area, since it's a rectangle, is equal to length times width. So if we call maybe this length and this width, we got length times width equals 100, and we can come up with the cost, the thing we want to minimize, in terms of L's and W's. Let's see, this side of the fence costs a dollar per meter. This is $6, this is $1. So our cost will be 1 times L plus 6 times L plus 1 times L. That's this side, this side, and this side. And then we got to also add in the top and the bottom. Those are each a dollar per meter. So here is our cost function right here. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit. 1L plus 6L plus 1L is 8L. And 1w plus 1w is 2w. So here's our cost function. We want to minimize this, so this is what we will take the derivative of. But you can't take the derivative yet because it has two variables in it, l and w. So we will solve this equation for one of the variables. Maybe we'll solve for l. Um, and instead of thinking about it as 100 over w, it might be easier to think about it as 100w to the negative 1. So, and then if you plug in L is equal to 100 W to the negative 1 into this equation, we get 8 times plus 2W. So, instead of writing L right here, we wrote, we wrote what L is equal to. 
And this is the thing we want to minimize. So this is what we take the derivative of. Let's see, so maybe I'll call this cost prime. The derivative of cost is, let's see, 8 is just a constant, 100 is just a constant, so we can leave the 800 alone. W to the negative 1, bring the negative 1 down in front. And then subtract 1 from the exponent, so you get W to the negative 2 plus 2. The derivative of W is just 1. And we will want to set this equal to 0 to find the critical point. Let's see, and if we solve here, we've got 800 W to the negative 2 equals 2. So multiply both sides by w squared and get 800 equals 2w squared. So then we got w squared equals 800 divided by 2 is 400. So w is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of 400. Square root of 400 is 20. And plus or minus, we don't want a negative width, so we'll just take the positive answer here. And let's see if we know that w is equal to 20. We can go back up here and say length is equal to 100 divided by 20, which is just 5. So we got length equals 100 over w. And we know w is 20. So length is equal to 5. So the dimensions of our yard will be 20 by 5 meters, I guess, although I don't really care about units. Um, and one thing I guess we should double check to make sure that in fact we did minimize cost. We didn't, um, the critical point we found was a local minimum. Um, I don't really care if you do this or not, but I guess to be as correct as possible, we should take the second derivative of cost. So if this right here is the first derivative, uh, the second derivative will be 1600 W to the negative three which is the same as 1600 over w cubed. So if we plug in a positive number here, we have a positive over a positive. So the second derivative is greater than zero, which means it's concave up. So in fact, we do have a minimum. So that's good. Uh, so our yard should be 20 by five. That's all.